everybody, Matt from Eastwood. Since the early days of car customizing, one of the most popular things you can do to make your car look lower and sleeker is to install a set of rear fender skirts. Today I'm going to show you the steps to make a custom set for yourself, so let's get started. First I stripped the layers of paint and primer off of the fender with the Contour SCT to give me a clean surface to work around. If you're working on a car that has nice paint, you can put masking tape or paper over the wheel arches where you're working. I drew out a rough design of what I wanted to build and the crucial measurements I needed for laying out the fender skirt. For this project, I used a piece of 20 gauge cold rolled sheet metal to make our fenders. I then set the fender face down on the metal to begin laying out our fender skirt. If you're doing this on the car, you can hold the metal to the fender and do the same. I marked the bottom edge of the fender skirt on the metal, leaving extra room below to allow for the bottom flange we will bend later and clamp the fender to the metal. This allowed me to use a scribe to trace the shape of the wheel opening first. I wanted the fender skirt to overlap the wheel opening a half inch and have a half inch lip folded underneath for strength. I set the dividers to a half inch and put one end in the small groove created by the wheel opening scribe and followed it creating a second scribe that will become our bend line. I then set the dividers to one inch and again ran along our wheel opening scribe to create our cut line. I used electric shears to rough cut the skirt out of the large piece of metal, leaving plenty of extra material in case we need to change the design on the fly. Next, I held the flat, rough cut skirt to the fender and drew reference and center line marks around the panel and fender to help me locate it in the same orientation each time we test fit it. Once my lines were all transferred, I could do a final trim on the cut scribe line around the top edge of the panel with the aviation snips. To easily set the panel to the correct position, drill eighth inch holes around the panel and transfer those holes to the fender with an automatic center punch. Drill those holes to eighth inch as well. This allowed me to use Clecos to quickly fasten the panel in the correct orientation each time we test fit it. If you're working on an already painted panel, you can use the reference marks and a set of carefully placed locking panel clamps. Now I can start shaping the panel. I chose a lower English wheel anvil that matched the contour I wanted in the panel at the end of the process. Clean the panel and wheels before rolling to avoid dirt or metal shavings getting pressed into the metal. I installed the panel and tightened the wheel down lightly on the metal. I rolled the panel top to bottom to put most of the shape in the panel front to back as I rolled it over the radius lower anvil. After my first pass, I clicked the panel back in place and checked fitment. I want a subtle curve to the panel, but not so much that it breaks the lines of the fender or car when installed. I used our adjustable curve template to set the curve that I wanted in the panel at the end to use as a guide along the way. I tightened the wheel and repeated this process until the panel had the shape I wanted. Once the overall shape of the panel was close, I put a relief cut where the two bend lines of the panel would intersect. I mounted the panel in the finger brake and bent the bottom flange to 90 degrees and cut off the excess material that I did not need. For the top edge of the panel, I needed to use the bead roller to fold the quarter inch lip that we scribed earlier. I used the tipping die with a soft lower wheel on the Eastwood Elite bead roller to gradually make this bend. I used light pressure between the dies when rolling the panel over the scribed bend line to score our bend in the panel. I applied light upward pressure to the panel to help initiate the bend around the top edge. Once the bend line was scored in the panel, I was able to run the panel through the wheel with a little more pressure between the dies and more upward pressure on the panel. When bending or folding an edge on an outside corner like this, you will see waves form in the panel along the edges. Those areas are where there is too much metal. 
Once these show up, you should stop and correct them before they get too large and you're not able to roll them through the bead roller. I installed each wave in the heavy duty shrinker and lightly pressed the pedal down. I watched closely and kept my hands right next to the area where we were shrinking and stopped shrinking as soon as I felt the panel relax and the wave was flattened out. Depending on your shrinker, this may take very little force. Once all of the waves were flattened out, I installed the panel back in the bead roller and ran it through again, pushing up more each time to slowly fold the lip over. Once the waves in the lip came back, I stopped and adjusted them again in the shrinker. After the lip was folded just over 90 degrees, I found two dollies with sharp tapered edges and put them into our bend line and hammered the lip down onto the dolly. I chose a dolly with rounded ends to use on the radius and the flat edge dolly on the sides where the shape was more flat to avoid putting marks in the bend line. After one round of hammering, I did a quick final shrink around the edge of the panel to correct any waves that came back in the lip. I then folded the lip down over the dolly until it touched. I hammered the flange a little further, but not completely flat. A completely flat or crushed edge can actually be weak and could allow the panel to buckle if stressed. After test fitting the panel, we needed to put the correct shape into the bottom edge of the panel so it flows with the rest of the fender. I again used the shrinker to shape the panel from the center outwards until the curve flowed with the rest of the panel. Finally, I installed the fender skirts in the English wheel and ran it with very light pressure to address any minor low spots and blend the shape of the panel together. This cross wheeling is like block sanding primer or filler where we are trying to blend any areas that we may have missed on the first pass in the wheel in the other direction. After wheeling the panel, I checked the shape and hammered down any minor high spots on the bend line along the top of the panel. I sanded all of the edges with 120 grit paper to take out shrinker and hammer marks along the edge of the panel. I finished the panel by spraying it down with pre and hitting it with a scuff pad for a clean finish ready for primer. Well there you have it, a straightforward way to make a bubble skirt that will complement any custom car. For all the tools that I used in this video and more, make sure you visit eastwood.com to get the tools to do the job right.